the sort of private meetings with customer CEOs and your, you know, effectively your peers, what are they asking you? What, what are they talking to you about in terms of security and privacy and compliance and sort of the regulatory regime that we see out there? Um, can you give us sort of a little peek into, the, into those conversations? Those are really important conversations, which, which a lot of CEOs uh, really do care about. And um, these topics resonate with many of them as, as they should. Um, I guess I'd point to a few things, one of which is, um, well, generative AI, of course, is on everybody's, uh, on everybody's mind. And uh, we get a lot of questions around, how do I think about security uh, in a generative AI world and things are moving so quickly and what types of applications or technologies should I be using and how do I know they're secure and how do I think about you know, being secure inside of my, uh, my company as well? The first part of the answer is you should expect from generative AI exactly the same level of security that you expect from any mm -hmm. other service that you consume. Somehow there's been this schism where people talk about enterprise security for all these services over here and then, oh, now let's talk about generative AI. And uh, it was actually quite, uh, quite astounding to me how some of the first uh, generative AI uh, chatbots or um, consumer-grade assistants came out really without a security model. And the data literally did go out over the internet and any improvements to the model literally would be shared by everybody using the models. And uh, that's why so many CIOs, CISOs, mm -hmm. and CEOs literally banned some of these assistants from their company, you know, for, for a good amount of time. Uh, it kind of amazes me because, um, you know, I think about going to a, a, a security minded CEO or a CIO or a CISO and, and saying, Hey, I, I've got this amazing new database service. There's nothing like it. Uh, you're going to love it. I really think you should adopt it. Buy the way, it's got no security model attached to it, but don't worry about it because I'll come around with V2 right. and it'll be secure then. I mean, I would get thrown out of my, you know what? Sure. At least I hope I would. I would deserve to. And so uh, I think other companies in this space have, for some reason, I can't tell you why, taken a different approach to security and somehow deemed it uh, uh, less important. And we're very predictable here. Uh, our our uh, generative AI services like Amazon Bedrock, which is a uh, managed uh, service for, for uh, operating foundation models, mm -hmm. uh, is no more secure and no less secure than any other AWS service. So that that's the first conversation around, right. around generative AI. Then there's some um, uh, some other topics as well, and uh, the topic of well, how do I uh, how do I uh, get a security mindset into my company? And I think that that gets back to culture, gets back to some of the things you and I uh, discussed today uh, around really top-down leadership and sending uh, signals from senior leaders that this matters and uh, the bar, the standards are incredibly high. And I often counsel my peers, it, it's, a lot of it's about uh, insisting on the highest standards and people need to see how high the standards are in security and what your lack of tolerance are for anything except those highest standards. Um, what advice would you give your peer CEOs who maybe are not leaning as leaning in as much to security risk and compliance issues within their organization to 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 get more involved in them. I think the first thing would be to understand how important is security to your business, uh, and, and in what ways is security important to your business. Um, you know, I, I think it's easy to say, oh, security, security. It always has to be the top thing that anybody is always worried about. And I already said for AWS, it is. For that sure. was a statement about us and, and the, the, the type of business we run and the, the trust that our customers uh, place in us to run their mission-critical workloads. Um, but there are other businesses for which uh, different aspects of their business probably um, you know, have a different security uh, set of risks and opportunities. And so deciding where does security really matter in my business, and, and that's going to help me decide where to invest because I think it can be pretty daunting if the concept is, well, I have to invest a massive amount of money everywhere in security, right. irrespective of whether I manufacture farm equipment or whether I have a, a large social media uh, website or whether uh, I'm, a, a, I'm a startup in the, uh, in the data space. Got it. And uh, I think the security priorities are going to be different. All those types of companies are going to have security needs, and security will, will be important in one way or another. But uh, I really you know, encourage people to kind of dive down deeper than that and figure out what the true priorities are. And then to, and, and that usually actually makes it a lot easier to invest because you, you say, hey, I'm going to start by investing uh, more there. And then 
we'll decide you know, what the next spots are uh, to invest. So um, that's probably the first thing I counsel folks. So what advice would you give to CISOs who are trying to report security and compliance in a meaningful way up to the CEO, the board of directors, that, that kind of thing? I'll, I'll tell you the advice I give my CISO and the, the requests <laughs> that I have of my CISO, uh, which I, I think is probably very similar to uh, what makes sense for other CISOs, which is to uh, put a customer lens, a customer filter on uh, your work, your job, and the advice and the counsel that you're giving. And the CISO's job is to uh, enable the business to do what it needs to do and what it wants to do to uh, delight customers and to provide value to customers, yep. comma, securely. So be innovative, be creative, you know, find ways uh, to say yes to the, to the idea that the business wants to do while at the same time uh, you know, being the champion of, uh, of, your, of your customers in terms of uh, uh, operating securely. And uh, I think that creates great credibility because mm -hmm. then the CISA becomes viewed as a valuable business partner who is driving and enabling the business. Uh, as opposed to somebody you know you need to get a, a, a checkbox from. And uh, I think it totally changes the relationship. And it also really helps with prioritizing the resources. Y you can really then tell when viewing it through the customer lens of you know, where do we truly create customer risk if we do X or where do we really create a great cu customer opportunity and security if we, if we do Y, uh, if you think about it uh, in that way. And then, by the way, um, I think also the, the CISO gains an enormous amount of credibility mm -hmm. on those occasions where he or she does say, I need to pull the and on cord. You know, right. we cannot, we should not uh, uh, do this. We need to, to fix something before we do. And if that is a, a rare occasion, then you, uh, if you're smart, you will take that very, very seriously. That's fantastic advice. Adam, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to meet with me today. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.